Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem pseudo palindromic paths in a binary tree. We're given a binary tree where the values are only going to be in the range from one to nine. And in this problem, we care about the paths in the binary tree that go from the root down to the leaf nodes. We want every single one of those such paths. That's one. This is another one. And lastly, this is one as well. So there's three paths, right? And that's because there are three leaf nodes, of course. Now for each of those paths, we want to first get the path itself. So like one path going down to here is two, three, three. Another path going down to this node is two, three, one. The last one going here is two, one, one. The order of these values actually doesn't matter. We don't care if this itself is a palindrome. We care if we can take these digits and somehow arrange it such that it looks like a palindrome. So right now this isn't a palindrome, but we know we can rearrange it to three, two, three. That looks like a palindrome to me. And if you don't know what a palindrome is, basically it means if you're going from left to right or right to left, it's the same. So three, two, three reads the same from front to back and back to front. That seems kind of difficult, doesn't it? to take these and just somehow know whether we can create a palindrome from it or not. Like, do we want to rearrange it in every single possibility? That can't possibly be efficient, and it's not going to be super easy to code up either. So that's kind of the hint in this problem, that there is a better way to do it. We don't want to get every single permutation of every single uh, leaf path. So how can we do it? Well, let's learn a bit about palindromes for a second. What kinds of palindromes are there? Well, there are odd length palindromes. We just looked at one, three, two, three. There are also even length palindromes like three, two, two, three. Why is it that we can have palindromes of odd length as well as of even length? Try to figure it out. Because look at this guy over here. If I get rid of these threes, it's still a palindrome. Like, let's think about the base case. We just have a single two. That's a palindrome. Look at the other case. We have two values. They're both two, but it's still a palindrome. But now, if we try to introduce like a three over here, two, three, that's not a palindrome. Why is that? Why is it not a palindrome? Why is two, three, four also not a palindrome? Try to think about it. The pattern here is that we can only have one digit that occurs an odd number of times. In other words, if we were to take any such string, any possible string, and for every single digit, we want to map it to the count of that digit. And we must ensure that only at most one digit occurs an odd number of times. So if we have this mapping, we can then get the number of digits that occur an odd number of times. That'll just be an integer. So in this uh, string down here, this is getting kind of messy, so let me kind of clean it up a little bit. In this string, we have three, it occurs two times. We have two, it occurs once. That's an odd number of times. So we have how many numbers occurring an odd number of times? Just one. So this is a palindrome. What about the second string? It looks like every one of these occurs once. That means we have three numbers that occur an odd number of times. This is not a palindrome. So let's look at the next one. Occurs once, this occurs twice. So we have one number that occurs an odd number of times. So this is again, a palindrome. So we have two palindromes because we have two such paths that have less than or equal to one number that occurs an odd number of times. Even just saying that out loud is kind of difficult. But I hope that this idea makes sense. That's kind of the crux of this problem. Once we know that, we've handled the palindrome part. Now it's kind of the easier part. Like how do we get every single path down to every single leaf node? We can do a very simple in order traversal. And the best part about that is we don't even visit multiple nodes twice because we'll go down here, pop back up, then go down here, then pop back up, and then go down here. We're not processing a node multiple times. Therefore, the time complexity in this problem is going to be big O of N. You might think the hash map is going to increase the memory complexity. It really doesn't because remember, we only have nine digits. The hash map isn't going to be very large, but there is something that does affect the memory complexity. The fact that we're going to be using recursion to traverse this tree means we might have a call stack that is as large as the height 
of this tree. Therefore, the memory complexity is going to be big O of the height. And in the worst case, the height might be equal to the number of nodes. So you can either say it's this or you could say it's big O of n in the worst absolute case. OK, now let's code it up. OK, so the first thing I want to do is declare a hash map. So I'm going to create a hash map just like this. I'm going to call it count. And I'm actually going to use a default dictionary because it's just a bit easier. It's going to be default dictionary of integer. This means that like if I were to do something like this count of let's say five or six and then add a one to it, we'd get an error because what this is doing is this. And this will give us a key does not exist error. But with a default dict, this will return zero by default, even if the key doesn't exist. And that just makes things a little bit easier. It removes the need for us to do an extra if statement. The other thing I'm going to do is have a variable which will tell us the number of digits with an odd count. OK, with that out of the way, let's start with the recursion. Let's do our in order traversal or DFS. I guess I'll just call it DFS because it's a bit shorter and we'll pass in the current node. And ultimately, we want to call our DFS on the root and then return the result. OK, now the simple base case is always if not cur, let's return zero. We have an empty tree and that's how I'm going to handle it. Though I will say there are probably multiple valid ways to handle the base cases for this problem. Now, if the node is not null, then let's get the count. Let's get the value of the node and then increment the count. So let's say current.val, let's add one to it. Okay, now this part I didn't actually talk about in the drawing explanation, but how do we want to manage this odd? I kind of talked about it like we're going to create the entire path, then we're going to read all the values at the end, count them. And that will tell us what the odd count is. But we can actually compute this as we go. We don't need to maintain all the nodes in the current path that we are on. We can do something kind of clever. If now, after incrementing the count of this value, if now it is an odd number, we should probably increment odd, right? We have one new number now that is odd. Now, in the opposite case, what if we had an odd number? Like, what if we counted some value has an count of one? It occurs one time. Therefore, it occurs an odd number of times. But now we see that same number again. Now we have a count of two for that number. Now it occurs an even number of times. Therefore, in this case, we should probably decrement the count of odd, right? This is probably the most confusing part of the problem, but think about it, draw it out. And I guess just to walk through it on the left side over here, when we have this two, we have two occurs one time. It occurs an odd number of times. When we have this three, it occurs once. It occurs an odd number of times. So at this point, we would have incremented odd twice. Now, when we get to the last leaf node, three, three occurs twice. So this time we actually decrement odd. It's going to be equal to one now. And that makes sense because when you look at the path, we have one number two, which occurs an odd number of times. A long story short, what we can do is say that the change in odd is going to be this. It's going to be one if the count of that value is odd. In other words, if it's equal to one. Otherwise, we're going to decrement odd. We're going to uh, set the odd change to negative one. Using that odd change, what we're going to do is update odd. Now, you might be wondering, why did I create this extra variable? Why didn't I just put odd over here and then have the plus equal set to this? Because think about this. Going back to the tree here on the left, once we're down here at the bottom three, three occurs two times. When we pop back up, we're going to do the opposite of what we just did. If we incremented the odd count, by one, now we have to decrement it by one because we lost that three. If we did the opposite, if we decremented the count when we went here, when we pop back up, we have to increment it. So basically what I'm saying is that before we end up returning down here to odd, we have to make sure that we subtract the odd change before we do that. And don't worry, like in between these, there is going to be recursion. That's the whole point of this, because clearly we're just canceling this out. And that would be meaningless if there wasn't anything in between this. Now we're ready for the interesting part. There are two cases at this point. We might have actually reached a leaf node. Cur might be a leaf node. How do we know if that's the case? If not cur.left and not cur.right. It doesn't have any children. What do we do in that case? We're definitely going to end up returning something. We're going to return the result. What is that result going to be? Well, like we said, 
if odd is less than or equal to one, then we return one. Otherwise, we can return zero because then we don't have a path. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a ternary operator here. I'm going to say the result is equal to one if the count of odd is less than or equal to one. Otherwise, it's equal to zero. And this is what we're going to return. But I did this for a reason. We're going to put something in between here because like I said, we want to make sure we change odd. We want to update odd before we return. And just like we want to update the count of odd, we want to update the count of the number as well. When we found cur, we incremented the count of cur by one. When we return from here, we want to decrement the count of cur by one. So let's do that right here. Okay, so that's the leaf node case. That's the other base case. Finally, for the recursive case, we can say the result is gonna be equal to the sum of whatever the result is in the left subtree plus the right subtree. And it looks like I didn't even need parentheses here because this line isn't too long. And I also realize it's not in order, it's actually DFS, so it's even shorter. And so from here, we'd also want to return the result, but don't forget, we probably want these two lines down here as well. And since we're duplicating these lines, maybe we can uh, refactor this a little bit to uh, have an else statement over here and put this result inside of the, whoops, put this result inside of the if statement, well, the else block. And we want this to occur regardless. We want to return the result regardless. So let's just take these three lines of code out of here and they will execute down here anyway. So we did a little bit of refactoring, shortened up the code. We are nearly done. There's one last thing that I saved for the end. When you have an object like count declared outside of a function like this, we can access that and we can modify that object. When I say modify, like we can add values to it, remove values, but we can't reassign it. If I were to do this, count is actually equal to this, I would get an error. Actually forget that, we can reassign it and we can actually do the same thing with odd. Like if we wanted to reassign odd to something, if we wanted to assign it to a 10, for example, this would actually work. What won't work is this odd is equal to odd plus 10 because what this tells Python is you've declared some variable called odd in the scope of this function. It tells Python that you're not using odd from outside. You're actually declaring a new version of odd. And then we're accessing odd at the same time. Like how can we say odd is equal to odd plus 10 when this isn't even assigned yet? it will give an error. And let me just run this to prove it. See, the error we get is cannot access local variable when it is not associated with a value. So the way to fix that is just to declare odd as a non-local value. So just like up above, this will basically tell Python that we're actually not declaring a new odd value down here. We're actually using the odd from out here. That's the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.